Composing Gloves here, and today in this FM synthesis series, I'm going to be looking at gaining a better understanding of sidebands and how they affect you. So let's uh, take a look at this. So before we got sort of tried to get as technical as they could about it. Now let's get a more intuitive understanding of it. So what I'm going to do, it's going to be a listening exercise mostly. So I'm going to start off with a default patch. Okay, here's my default patch. And oh, okay, basic sine wave. I'm going to go down several octaves. I'm going to set my ratio. At, I'm just going to leave it at two. And I am simply going to modulate it by two. And I'm going to very slowly raise the modulation. This, modu this modulation index is at 100%. And then I'm going to very slowly bring the ratio up. As I do so, you will notice that frequencies will begin to appear as bigger. And as the index increases, they will get smaller and newer, larger frequencies will come in. This will, I feel like there's an intuitive to, to doing this exercise. That will give you the ability to be creative with FM. So uh, let's go ahead and do it. And you will notice that as this increases, this will give you some idea of the timbral characteristics that happen. We'll go ahead and do it with a sine wave and with a, a triangle wave. I'll leave it up to you to do it with the other waves.
there you have it. So, okay, that's really interesting and stuff, but uh, hopefully you notice that the bands, the lower ones, as they got higher up, you could see them sort of form, and as the frequency increased, they got faster and faster and faster, and newer low bands came in. Near the end, it gets a little weird. Um, it's just because of the nature of the summing and the height. You'll notice that they move farther away from the fundamental. Once they move out of the spectrum, weird things come in as they start to re-enter the spectrum. So, let's do the triangle wave. Just to get it, uh, something to compare it against. So that's triangle wave. Quite a bit different. Very interesting. Um, you can see it's quite a bit crisper. You can see the frequency starts to bounce back at near the top of the spectrum. You'll notice that around four things to start to get as they approach the limits of our, our hearing, they start to bounce back. Um, you hopefully notice the peaks and valleys and the various ways these things add in some, which is a direct relationship uh, relationship of our sideband. Now remember, this is with a full frequency modulation index. With fewer, there won't be as many sidebands. This smaller one. So hopefully that gave you a bit more uh, intuitiveness as to what you're grabbing and why you're grabbing it. That explains a lot, a lot of things um, as far as things behaving the way they do. Now if you took this, you'd expect changes to happen on the positive. It'd be a bit different. So if we took this and... So that's that. Now, that was something that really made a big difference to me when I was still learning, um, was getting that grasp of, oh, the sidebands enter in slowly. And as I change this, this will influence that. And now you understand from the previous video on sidebands, some of the harmonic ratios that kind of go on. Uh, so all this really left is to kind of talk about specific examples. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to do that. I feel like that's something that everyone should listen to and sort of be made aware of. I encourage you to try it out with other waveform and wave type so you can get a feel for how things go. <laughs> Because they do the the nature of these clicks and things you know, has some really interesting implications. So, if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Opposing force. Reversing.